and I'm going to call the Town Building Advisory Committee meeting for January 6th to order. Um, we have present Julie Chalfant, Cheryl Morrow, and Greg Franceschi, so that gives us the quorum. Um, the first item, the first item, sorry. <laughs> The first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for the past two meetings um, for November 1st, 2021 and December 15th, 2021, which I emailed out, I don't know, a whopping half hour ago or something. So hopefully folks got that. Um, would anybody like to make a recommendation? Oh, Greg, you're muted. Greg, you're muted. Can Oops. you hear? Could you could you speak um, closer to the microphone, Julie? I can. Is that oh. better? Oh, huh. Is that better? That's not better? That's much better. Okay. Um, Thank you. So did you get the email with the minutes in it from the past two meetings? Yes. Good. Um, would anybody like to make a motion for the, to approve those minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Um, do you have a second? Thank you, Why don't we do both of them? Okay. Do both of them? All right. I also recommend that we accept the minutes of December 15, 2021. All right, so it's been moved, I'll second that. So it's been moved and seconded for that we approve the minutes of November 1st and December 15th, 2021. Are there any comments or discussion? No? Nope. Uh, all in favor, we need to do a roll call vote. Cheryl Morrow? Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. Greg Franceschi? Aye. All right, that passes 300. Zero, zero. The next item on the agenda is to talk about the um, next steps for the old grammar school building. Um, where we are right now is um, Dave Wolfram is working with Chief Paturik to come up with a, a, um, an application to the CPA committee, the CPC, I guess they are, um, to use CPA funds to first do an architectural study of the building in order to design a town hall to go into that building or a, a way to reuse that building for a town hall, including an external elevator. Um, and then once that is done, so the CPA application this year would be for funds to do that architectural study in the neighborhood of $350,000 for that study. We would then go back to CPA a year from now and request funds to actually do the refurbishment, which they are estimating will be in the neighborhood of three to three and a half million for the full job. Um, there's one other piece to this, which is that um, Carolyn Shores Ness and Denise Mason are going to the Mass MMA, whatever that stands for, Mass Municipal Association um, meeting the end of January. And they are going, um, part of the purpose of their attending that meeting is to seek funding for a whole variety of projects that the town wants to do, one of which would be an extension to that building. Um, that would basically build another building of almost the same size, three or four stories right behind it that would be attached through that place where the elevator is. Um, so if they're able to get external funding um, from some other grant, then there's the potential that there would be an, another building put onto that. That would not be part of our CPA application. So any questions on that? No. no okay. We could hear Greg earlier, right? Okay. 
Um, so there are two things I wanted to do tonight. One is to write a letter from the Town Building Advisory Committee in support of that application, assuming that we agree that this is a good thing to do with CPA funds. Um, and then the other is to go through and look at a draft CPA, not a draft, but the outline of what goes into the CPA application to see um, what type of support that we as a committee can provide to that. Um, so I'll start with the letter. Um, let me see. Share, share. So here is a draft letter. Um, Greg, is that big enough? Um, well, I can make it. Let me get some glasses. Okay. This thing always gets in the way. I don't know. I don't see it up there. That's the right. Well, I gotta see it. Is that there? I have a question. Sure. This is Linda Kelly. I'm just uh -huh. joining. You're referring to the old grammar school building, which presently is the town hall, correct? No, no the even older grammar school building. Are you so, talking about the clap building, which is the senior center? Right, exactly. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> Hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? Hey, um, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but we had a pretty major water leak in the senior center. Um, Sue came in on, I can't remember what day it was, but it was like a Monday after one of the holidays. I can't remember if it was Christmas or New Year's. I think it had to be Christmas. Um, and the uh, basically the first floor was getting flooded. Um, one of the radiators let go. Um, I was able to talk one of my guys through how to go down and, and turn that zone off. You know, thank God a year and a half ago, I spent 2,500 bucks, but it was worth every penny. So we're able to keep the rest of the building heated and, and each zone has a ball valve. Um, I'm really glad we did that. But anyway, um, we, we collectively, the, the highway, we took care of the worst of it. And then, um, uh, Maya, our insurance company was in call. They came out same day and service pro has been in there um, or service master and they're doing cleanup. So that's to help dry stuff out and, and do whatever. It was basically the, the first floor, um, like Sugarloaf, not Sugarloaf Street, but Conway Street side is, is that radiator on that wall is what let go. So you know, I mean, it wasn't like it was, you know, feet of water, but, you know, there was standing water going across, heading towards, didn't go down the basement stairs, but it was heading that direction. But that's secured now and you've somewhat dried it up and. Yeah, sir. Actually, service master was there again today. I believe they're coming back again tomorrow. Um, you know, we, what we did do is we, we got, or actually I got in touch with the, uh, uh, the, the VFW guys and said, Hey, you know, I really need you to open that door up for us. Um, you know, we had this, that we had problems. Um, but we also talked about, you know, uh, no matter, pretty much no matter what we do, we need to move you someplace. Um, and 
you know, I'm going to try and make the recommendation to see if we can corner off. I mean, because they're just looking for some place to put a desk and and a couple of filing cabinets, their files and stuff. But you know, if we can cordon off an area where, like, as soon as you walk into the church, not the side that they're planning on doing the senior center, but as soon as you walk in, you know, you've got a ten foot area that goes from one side of the building to the other you know take like maybe a third of that and say okay you can you can have your desk over here you can have this over there you can have this and and then they've got some place to go to um you know because to be honest with you you know if, if you really look at where we're putting our vets that's got to be disgusting places i've ever seen so you know i'd like to see what we can do to move forward to get them moved to a better place um, but again, all of that evolves around what eventually happens with the church. So, so where is the space, Kevin? You know, when you know when you go in the front doors, you know, you, where you go in the very front door and then there's like before you go into another set of double doors to go in into like church. where all the pews are? In the church, yeah. The in the narthex, church. Yeah, the narthex. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, whatever, whatever the entryway is before you yeah. go into where the pews are. So you've got that small area that's right there that make well, one side of that may be good enough to at least get these guys out of the basement. You know, they do have um, uh, their weapons and stuff like that are being stored over at Waitley Town Hall and their vault. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what we can do to, to help these guys out because it's, you know, they don't have a home and, and they really need a home because, you know, I mean, I think that's our responsibility to take care of the vet. So. So would they be having meetings there? Is that no? At this point in time, I think they're just looking for some place just to just to hang their hat for for their files and things like that. These guys don't want to bring all the stuff to their houses, you know, because they you know they they, they just don't want to. You know, I, I don't blame them. Because um, I don't know if that part of the church is heated. If they needed, you know, I I don't even think. Well, think about this. Where would you rather be? Would you rather be in the basement of the existing senior center? No. <laughs> or would you rather would you rather be there over there at the church? Oh, are you talking the BFW or the senior center office? The BFW, the BFW. ones in the basement. Oh, okay. All right. No, no, the senior center, that's however they're trying to configure how that's going to work. That is completely outside of my realm. And once I get it figured out, you tell me what's going to do, and that's what we'll do. But um what I'm trying to champion for right now is is the VFW guys. Do you know whether Sue has, um, whether she's still using the senior center, the old senior center space? Yeah, for yeah, her? no, they 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 still use they still use their their facilities, um, you know. But again, this boils down to what are we doing with what, you know? Because we can sit here and we can nail one foot to the floor and continue to go around in a circle saying, you know, we'd like to do, we'd like to do, we'd like to do. Well. You know, I think like Julie says, you know, let's go ahead and put a letter together and say, hey, look, you know, this is our opinion. You know, you asked us to put this together and here it is. And we feel that this is what you need to do to move forward. So giddy up. Okay. So here is a letter of support for using CPA funds to refurbish the, I'm calling it the old grammar school building. Um, we can change that. Does um, can y'all read through this and see if this works for you? If anybody has any recommendations of things we should add or change or whatever. I'll write out to the. Oh well, yeah, not, God forbid if you don't put in the reference. So again, a question, Linda Kelly. Um, I'm reading the three things that you're looking at doing, and I don't see any mention of the church building. I'm not talking about the church building in this. This letter is only talking about the old grammar school building. So um, the church building is a separate part. We're just not talking about that tonight, but. Um, okay, no, I understand that. But I just, when you, the three of them really go together and I understand that you can only focus on one, the clap building. 
the church and the town hall. One one project impacts another greatly, and it's it's hard to read through this letter and say, okay, yeah, I agree with all of this, or don't, because you don't know what's happening with the other two. The three of them are very connected in what you do with um, one. But but if but if you go ahead and make the final decision, let's just say arbitrarily, they say, you know what? We're going to go ahead. We're going to invest the money into the old grammar school or the existing senior center, and we're going to make that town hall. Now, all of a sudden, that just made a decision what's going to happen with town hall. So now that means town hall is going to get ripped down, and they're going to put up a new senior center. So now that your senior center has been squared away. So, but if you look at the big picture, that's three to five years away. You know, so so the so the the church, and this is my opinion from what I've seen is the church is a separate issue to try and get them in there, the seniors in there, so they can get out of where they are now, because where they are now, they can't leave anything there. You know, they have to haul everything in every day that they're open. They haul it in, they haul it out. The only thing that they're allowed to keep over there is that white sign that says senior center. Everything else physically has to move. <laughs> um, you know, and, and that's difficult for Sue. You know, I mean, she, she's a, I mean, it's, I believe they're in the process of, of bringing on a, another person there, but I mean, she's been a one band band and, you know, she's been doing a hell of a job trying to keep it all put together from what I've seen. So, um, but, but I, I believe, and I truly believe that a decision needs to be made on this building. And that in turn either says, either you're going to turn it into a, a, a senior center, you're going to turn that into housing, or you're going to turn it into the town hall. So, so once you make a decision on one building, then you can start making decisions on the other or others automatically fall into place is, is what I see, but. You know. So Kevin, at the CCI meeting where we had the representatives from all the different committees, um, yeah. it was decided to move forward on this project, which is to refurbish the old grammar school building and move town hall into that building after it's refurbished. Um, there okay, was cool. not a decision. So that leaves you open for a couple of other things that could happen. There has not been a firm decision on anything beyond that. Um, so we could look, there's not a firm, it's my understanding, y'all can correct mm -hmm. it, but um, we could look at refurbishing the church and continuing to use that either as a meeting space or for something else. We could look at refurbishing this building that we're sitting in right now, the current town hall. We no, no, could no, no, no. look at tearing down this building. So none of that is decided, but all of that is open. We could build a new senior center um, mm -hmm. at some point. All of that is open, but this step right here, which is refurbishing the old grammar school building and moving the town hall in there has been perfect. And, well, and I'll be, I'll be I honest feel with you, if it comes to talking about what, where you're sitting in right now in town hall, we're um, not talking about that tonight. No, no, no. What I, I'm just going to tell you real quick, just my own personal opinion, just mm -hmm. from dealing with that part, because uh, so far I've got 16 hours of an electrician trying to chase where the power goes. And it's, it's like that through the entire building. Nothing's working. You've got five AC units, five, six, seven, eight AC units running that, that building to try and help cool it. It's, it's, it's crazy, you know? And if you look at structurally wise, the way that it is designed, I, I would, I'd put a match to it. So why is it going to make a good scene? Uh, Linda, thing? we're not gonna take any more public comment for a few minutes, right. I'm sorry. Um, okay, sorry. So let's move forward on this. Can you all look at this letter? And does anybody have recommendations on the letter? Well, I um, I do. Is, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I I am really having a hard time with the the um, the process. Um, I I guess it uh, from I feel that my perspective. Um, and I think my perspective is shared by many people, especially seniors in this town, um, is that the seniors want the senior center building. They want it to stay their building. 
I'd never heard anyone say anything about the senior center building being turned into town hall until the, um, the committee of committees met a few weeks ago and decided that amongst themselves, but the architects weren't recommending that. The seniors in the survey, they all like that building and um, they wanna stay. I know Sue wants to stay and I don't understand why a decision was made without consulting the seniors at all about moving their building. They've already been uprooted unnecessarily because of bad planning. I mean, nothing was ever done about the mold problem. So now they're, they're living like homeless people over at the church. Every day they have to move in, move out. It's, it's a terrible situation. Then they're going to yeah, be at the, they can't, at the church they can't for a couple of years. They can't go into their old senior center building right now because it's full of mold, right? right. And water. But when, they, when that building is fixed, why, why are they no longer allowed to go back to the building where they were? It make a lot of sense for a senior center when you can have a building that's all on one floor. But they're not getting a building that's all on one floor. They're tearing down the town hall, which is all on one floor. And it has not been decided to tear down the town hall. It And it has been decided to support keeping that church building, which is all on one floor. So there well, are Kevin just said that right there that are all on one floor. If the town hall is torn down, then they will build a new building. Mm -hmm. Where is the story. money going to come from? What? Where is all this money going to come from? That's an excellent question. So, um, I mean, we need to have a contingency plan that gives the seniors some stability. They need to have a place that they're going to be and that they're going to be able to build and improve and, you know, that the town is behind them in. They're getting jerked around and they're angry about it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't we trying to take the existing church area and, and make that acceptable until something new is is built for them that was yes, what i thought was the was the thought process but that absolutely is the plan and to give them a home that will be that will work for several years um so that they have a place to be and have their the senior center functions within the church building well because that's, if that's the case it seems like we're putting the cart before the horse why don't we focus our attention right now on getting the church usable so the seniors can be in oh, the church so that, and then Greg, that, that is that is already planned and going forward so deerfield academy has already met with people in the town and deerfield academy is going to refurbish the fellowship hall piece of the church so that it can be used by the senior center that's already planned and going forward and the senior center is going to end up in that church building with refurbished space that that will be accomplished by Deerfield Academy. Nothing to do with the pew area. I mean, here is that. And we're yeah. hoping to have it done, you know, by the spring. You need a veggie burger. You know, so 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 one of the one of the problems, I, or I shouldn't say a problem, but like like we keep you know we keep saying it's the old grammar school. It's because the town recognizes the town itself, recognizes that building, not as the senior center, that is the old grammar school building that the senior center happens to be in. There's other people that happen to use that area, more of like a community center, because one of the problems is, is when as soon as you go ahead and you say senior center only, that can restrict a lot of your, your, your funding possibility instead of in you know arbitrarily like like they're doing with the uh, the library you know you can't you can't add a community room or a senior center onto it because then the funding doesn't work it's 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 stupid but <laughs> welcome to municipality yeah yeah so if everybody can hear me okay i'll jump in quick uh, I think Julie touched base on several of the issues. Number one, the residents have really expressed the desire to keep the old building. So we know that. We know that a four-story building, when we look 5, 10, 20 years down the road, is not really adequate for a senior center. A senior center, a community center, should be on a single floor. It should be much bigger than 1,800 square feet on a single floor. So to take care of the seniors for the next 
40 to 50 years in an appropriate building, we should be looking at six to 12,000 square feet on a single floor, not a four story structure. So taking that into account, you know, I think a lot of people have expressed the opinion that it does make sense to move the municipal offices over there, transfer the seniors over to the church with a, a renovation where they feel at home for two to three years and immediately evaluate at the exact same time. This is not putting the seniors off and that's got to be crystal clear. Yeah. We are not putting the seniors off whatsoever. If we do this correctly, we will allocate money at a special or an annual town meeting for an architect to renovate the old schoolhouse, what people know as the senior center. We will also allocate funds at the same town meeting to design a brand new senior community center. Hopefully we can work with our legislative delegation to pursue funding sources for that as it would be a regional environment between Sunderland, Waitley, and Deerfield. So I believe that's the current goal of the Connected Communities Initiative. I think it's a good goal. It's a goal I support. Relative to the current building, this letter is spot on. We can use community preservation funds, as everybody's well aware, as long as we follow the Secretary of Interior Design's standards and recommendations. That's gonna be made crystal clear to the architectural firm. Mm -hmm. So I would make a motion that we go ahead and uh, support this letter and allow Julie to draft it up and send it along. I support the letter. I don't support the statement that our committee supports using the building for that purpose. I think that should be, we should wait on that and you know, weigh all of the evidence as time, you know, as, as it evolves and as we all learn more about wh what funding is actually available versus you know, what funding we would like to be available because if it doesn't come through, then what's gonna happen? If they don't give us any money to build a new town, a new senior center or to tear down the town hall and all the things that are being talked about, I mean, the thing of tearing down the town hall, the architects never recommended that we tear down town hall. That was the one building they said that it was basically in pretty good shape along with the highway department. They had suggestions that you know, were made for the town hall and the highway department, but the other buildings were the ones with all the big problems and that they wanted us to tear down, the, the, the church in particular, obviously. So I think we should send the letter, but I don't think that we should say that we're on board with um, turning the old grammar school into the town hall, the new town hall. I think that we should renovate it and whatever use it's going to be put to, you know, it's going to need an elevator no matter how it's used. So we should start working on it and get CPA money, get the first phase done, get the brick repointed so it doesn't all fall off, get the drainage problem solved once and for all and dry out the basement and then see where we are and give everybody an opportunity to weigh in on this. I don't think the seniors were consulted by the committee of, you know, the, the, the committees with, with all the representatives. I forget the name of the, what's it called? Somebody help me out. CCI. CCI. Um, do we have a second on John's motion to approve the letter? I'm objecting to that. I'm making a suggestion that we change that part of the letter and leave everything else exactly as it is. Just not recommend, so not say that we recommend as our committee that it be used as town hall. I can't vote. Yeah. Um, here's what I would propose, that we have a motion and a second on this letter, and then Greg, why don't you propose a, a, an amendment to the letter? I'll we'll second the motion to um, approve this letter to be sent to the select board as it stands. Okay, so now, Greg, you make a motion to take out the repurpose to house the municipal offices piece. Okay, I would like to make an amendment to remove the line about repurposing it as the municipal offices. Okay, do we have a second for Greg's motion to remove that piece? No. 
All right, so it doesn't look like you have any support. Um, so I, Greg, I, I actually don't agree with you on this, that piece of it. I think it is an excellent use for that building. And um, this, this is why, assuming I can articulate this in a reasonable manner. Um, it, it seems to me like that building is, since it is four stories, it would be a better use to use that for town hall offices. And it provides more space than the current town hall building. So if worse comes to worse, like absolute worse, and we get no money from anybody except for the money that we already have in town, using CPA funds to refurbish that and move town hall in there leaves us with this building as is that is all on one floor and could be used as a senior center. And it leaves us the church building, which is all on one floor and could be used as a senior center. And either one of these buildings could be you know, upgraded somehow in order to serve that purpose. So I think that there will be a home for the senior center, even if no money is available. And then we are actively pursuing funds to um, build a new senior center if, you know, assuming we can come up with funding with that. We are pursuing funds for the expansion to the library, which gives us more meeting space. There, there's a number of initiatives out there. So I think, in my opinion, even in worst case, um, we still have a home for the seniors that could be a good home for the seniors. Um, the senior center, not the seniors. Or is that going to move in? And I think the current town hall, even as is, with a renovated single floor over there for the senior center, this would be a better space, even unrenovated, than a renovated single floor over there. This would give them more options than that would. And that's no part of my intent. My intent is to get them a brand new building, but yeah. Like this room in here, and there's a kitchen back there, and there's rooms off to the side that could be different. Yeah, but imagine uh, nurses and, and, you know, the yeah. guy, doctor coming in to do the nail clippings yeah. and, yeah, the senior center director could actually have a massive office. And, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, mm -hmm. this building is five times on one single floor what that building is on a single floor. All right, Please any other? Oh, Greg, you're muted. Do you have other comments? Kevin earlier in this meeting said that the town hall should be burned to the ground or something to that effect, that it's not worth fixing or that it's, you know, that's, it's that, that's, my, that's, that's my personal opinion as somebody that has worked on that building since 2010. So I have seen, I, I have, I have seen on how the structure of the wings are held up. It's held up with three quarter plywood. I don't see any blocking that goes in between that's really holding it together. It's basically held together with the plywood that's on the roof. There is no insulation in the roof because it's designed because when they built that part of the building, oil was cheap, didn't care, burn the oil, have it go right up. Now, now you, you're going to you do something where you insulate it. Now you're going to have to completely redo the, the entire roofing system. Now, let's go into our sewer, okay? The sewer, we have problems with inside the building. Everything where these guys are sitting down below, you're gonna have to rip all that up if you wanna do anything with the kitchen anymore. Look at where, if you wanna try and bring the senior center into there, how many people are gonna go down that ramp all the time? So you need to take more of that area and make it flat. I mean, there, there's just so many things that are bad with that building. The, the energy efficiency of the building, the electrical. Right now, we're, we're chasing a electrical issue in the kitchen where we can't find it because it's in the floor someplace. So now we're trying to basically tag off of something else and put a new feed to it. But we had to look at seven breaker boxes to figure out where we're going. There's two in the kitchen. There's three in the electrical room. There's two in the room next to the bathroom there in town hall. You go into the room where the uh, boilers are. There's two more in there. And you go into the side room off of that. Then there's three more in there. So it's, it's crazy in how this place is wired on how, as far as mechanically wise, again, this is just me working on the place for so many years that would be my opinion and and i would definitely 
much rather see a brand new building go in because otherwise, you know, it, you look at, you know, what do you got? You got three, Thanks, four. Yeah, we got to keep on the agenda, buddy. Yeah. So anyway, right. so you understand where I'm coming from. Next it's, door it's called the old schoolhouse. Yeah, it's, it's yep. B. So. Yep. so I think Julie's eventually going to call for a vote here. Yep, as I we am. have a motion yep. in a second. We do have a motion in a second. Is there any further comment on this letter? All right. All those in favor, we'll do a roll call vote. John Pachorek, yes. Julie Chalfin, aye. Joe Morrow, aye. Greg Franceschi? Nay. Yep. Okay. So that's 310. Three, one, zero. Zero. All right. Oh, I see another one. What's the CPA request? I forgot what else was on the agenda. Um, that's pretty much it. So the other thing I have is the start of a draft for a CPA application, um, oh, which nice. appears not to be in this computer, which is unfortunate because then I can't share it on the screen. Um, so I had wanted to go through that. did this on my other computer and didn't bring it with me so that's not gonna work um, so for community fund preservation act request Julie filled out a form for three hundred fifty thousand dollars for architectural and design fees in the summary it says this project will ultimately rehabilitate the old grammar school building located at 67 North Main Street South Deerfield Massachusetts mm -hmm. for the repurpose the building to house the town hall municipal offices thus simultaneously saving a building of historic value to the town in providing upgraded functional and energy smart facilities to serve the town administration. Phase one is to create the architectural and engineering drawings for the refurbishment of the building and perform actions as necessary to save the building pending refurbishment, such as sealing from water intrusion and reinforcing the brickwork. Phase two will include the actual refurbishment and will be the subject of a future CPA fund application using the information and drawings generated by phase one. I think, it's, yeah, I think it's very, yep, I think it's very well worded. Um, so, Kevin, is is there work that needs to be done immediately to save that building, like within the upcoming year? Um, um, I, I definitely agree with with Greg. You know, there's there are some stuff we need to do around the base. You know, around the windows, we need to probably start waterproofing. You know, I think that should definitely be part of phase one of of trying to. Um, just make the place better. I mean, because like right now, like you said, you know, there's there's a ton of water going in, you know, and and structurally wise, that little area that goes down into the basement from the outside. Um, I'll be honest with you, I would be very sketchy about walking down there because that roof is ready to come in anytime, and and we and plus we've got water coming in, um, through there. Um, that would be my, that would be the first thing I would look at is definitely trying to make sure that we got no more water going in the basement. How do we come up with a dollar value for that we should request from CPA to do that sort of just basic keep the building from falling down before we can refurbish it? Um, let me see. You know what? I'll be honest with you. What I've been really trying to ask for is a on-call carpenter. You know, I, I've got an all-car on-call electrician. I've got on-call plumbers, but I don't have anybody that can build me anything. You know, and something like that would be more of like a poor choice of putting it. I mean, a handyman could be doing that for what it is, you know. Um, but to try and find somebody that would give us a price to do that, I, I can start asking around to find out, you know, who would be available. You know, is there a service out there or do we just look at one of our local contractors? And, and ask them what, what they would do it for. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Is it a lot of work? It's not a ton of work. I mean, if, if you're going to get down and dirty, you know, what you could do is you could take some, some furring strips and, and roll plastic into the furring strip and then go around the base of the building just above the brick. Have that roll down, 
to the edge of the, of the footing and then have it come out probably about another three or four feet because that's where your concrete is coming down also. And that's where your water is being infiltrated. You did that, you could pretty much stop most of your water again, fairly cheaply. You know, you could probably get out of it for a couple grand. Um, when it comes to redoing the other, uh, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't even put anybody in there to try and reinforce it. You know, it's, it's that far gone. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, I need to find somebody is what I need. So if anybody knows a good carpenter or somebody that, that, you know, is, is trustworthy that we can bring in and, and, and give us a, a fair price, but not be stupid and come in with a low ball price just to try and get the job and then find out it's going to be, you know, five more change orders later and it's another $15,000. You know, that, that's the other thing that scares me. No, I got somebody that may do it. All right, cool. Yeah, that's perfect. Find me tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I think, I think that's a, that's a, again, down and dirty, you know, keep the water out. Yeah. I, I, I'm not worried about repointing the brick. That can be part of phase two to me. I'm more mm -hmm. worried about stopping the water going in. Once right. we stop the water going in, because I would think that fall special town meeting that we would be looking at for funding to proceed forward with this project as a whole. Mm -hmm. Do you think that quickly? Great. So I, should we request CPA funds for the whole shebang and not do it in two phases? No, I think we would want to wait to a fall special town meeting to come up with the true number once the architectural design is even at 50%. They'll be able to give us a much more accurate figure. Yeah. Hey, Greg, do you know of, you've looked at this building quite a bit, so there's water intrusion, but what, wasn't there something also with like bricks falling out or something? Yeah. Um, I think that the brick repointing of the brick, I agree with John, probably the entire building does not need to be repointed anytime soon, but there are places where the brick has con been compromised so much that if it isn't repaired, even if it's just, you know, a temporary patch to make it, you know, solid until it is repointed, um, it's going to get worse and cause more problems. So I think that it needs to be um there need to be some patches for sure. In the Agreed. Brick. Agreed. If if you look if you're looking at the building, the left hand side, not the first indent, but the second one, um, you can you can move the wall. Um, we picked up on that the other day, so that that definitely needs to be looked at. with a, an estimate for that work? Uh, it sounds like John's going to be able to hook me up with somebody that will be able to go in there and say, this is this. You know, when it comes to the to the brick work, to be honest with you, I'd grab Corpita um, because he, he would give you a decent price and it would be fairly comparable. And to be honest with you, you know, with, with the price of things going stupid so quickly, um, whatever we put in, I, I would probably ask for another 20% on top of it. So Kevin, do you think we need to put in money for the brickwork right away or can it wait till phase two with the actual construction? No, I think that really needs to be part of the beginning because that it's 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 pretty structurally it 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 needs to be done. Okay, so we should get Paul yeah. in there in the next week, get an estimate and get it over to yeah. Jewel. That'd be okay. fantastic. All right. So yeah, I can I can reach out to him tomorrow. You were talking about was a grand or two. I'm not gonna fill out an application for CPA for a grand or two. Right. We right. can find that money anywhere. Yeah. Between you and I, we can locate a grand or two. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. But like I said, that's that's a down and dirty. That's just to you know put up plastic and just keep water away from the base of the building. You know, again, and I don't know what what Paul would charge to because if we're going to repoint, we really should repoint from basically chest high down. Is is where we need to go. Well, my concern is we can identify a lot of that in phase two as part of the construction. I just want to make sure it's structurally sound. Right. If there's things falling out that we identify that with Paul and get it fit. So it's, right. it's sound for the time being, because yep. I think we're going to be looking at construction on that building in probably the next 12 to 15 months. They're Perfect. going to be starting to rip it apart. So that'd, that'd be great. Cool. Yeah, I'd be all over that. Yeah, I'll get into, I'll reach out to Paul tomorrow. Great. Thanks. So, John, I have a question for you with regards to the elevator. Sure. Um, 
it, it sounds like you've already spoken with an architect and there's a preliminary you know conversation having have that's happened already about some of this stuff is the elevator plan to be on the inside of the building or the outside of the building because at one point i heard someone talking about having the elevator on the inside near the entrance from the north main street side of the building and then in another conversation i heard someone saying that it should go in the back of the building and i was just wondering where that stood it would be the exterior where the current ramp is okay yep yep that's where it would be and there would also be an interior staircase built onto that addition as well as a secondary egress and an emergency so it almost be like a mini addition right where the whole ramp area is. And well, I can't say mini because an elevator and a shaft and is, there's nothing mini about it. Yeah. Yeah, those finalized plans will be going to uh, the select board in the probably the next week or two. Wow. But those are just preliminary sketches, Greg. Those those are not 25 or 100 percent designs. That's we're talking the $350,000 is to come up to 100% design from a true architect to go out to bid. This Do is you remember in the conversation dollar project for an architecture firm. Was the decision to have it on the outside of the building a cost? To, I mean, was it because it's significantly less expensive to go on the outside? Yes, yes, it's, it's way less expensive. And yet you're not taking up interior square footage wise, mm -hmm. it would literally take up almost half of the interior space between us interior staircase and the elevator shaft it'd take up a ton of room is there going to be an issue with the cpa money being available to us no, to a natural handicap upgrade to a historic building so it doesn't matter that it's a historic building in terms of like the because whatever I, I don't know what cpa's rules are but in terms of the delineation of historic building I know that you're allowed to do whatever you want on the inside, but I thought you weren't allowed to change the outside. No, I think you can because of its ADA requirement. Guidelines and standards, the inside and outside we have to follow. So in addition, outside has to retain the current character and structure of that building. Okay. So the brick would have to almost match it. It would have to be consistent with the current design of that building. It just has to stylistically go with it. Um, the, the, I, I was actually, I read that, so if you use CPA funds for a historic building, then you have to follow the Department of Interior's guidelines on historic buildings or whatever they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually went and read them and they're not that bad. No, they're not really rigid. Them to yeah. Be horrible. Yeah. They're not that bad. Um, I can find them again and send them out to everybody. I, yeah, it basically says when you can preserve it, you you shall preserve it. And when you can't, that you should try and replicate it. But if you can't, they understand and proceed forward. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So um, for the CPA application, a couple of things. There's a bunch of questions that we have to go through and answer. But a um, couple of things. One is endorsements for, from Deerfield boards or committees. Um, so I wrote down, I was trying to come up with who we would be looking for. So obviously historical commission, um, TBAC, finance committee, um, are there other committees? Can anybody think of other committees that we should be reaching out to, to support this refurbishment of this building? Oh, senior center. I guess we should ask them. Um, since they're going to have to move, they're probably not going to move. It'd be good. So, um, Trevor McDaniel is on that CCI group and he's on the board of oversight for the senior center. I, I can't imagine he hasn't talked to the board of oversight about this plan, mm -hmm. but, um, I will ask Trevor or Greg, if you're talking to Trevor sometime, you might ask him about whether they've reached out to the senior center about this. I feel like they know, but um, we'll check on that. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, 
And then there's also like not town committees, but just other people. Are there groups in town that anybody can think of that we should ask about? DFW maybe since they've been in that building. Yeah. A butter. Greg, you live across the street. <laughs> you know, write a letter supporting. <laughs> Not the town hall piece of it, but the refurbishment of the building piece. I'm sorry, we were asking if I'll write a letter. Um, in support of using CPA funds to refurbish this building. Sure. Did he ask the bank? Across the street. Mm. Okay. Um, and then there's several questions that really the I think the historical commission would be the best ones to ask to provide us some support in answering them. Um, for example, has the property been noted in published histories of the town? Um, what are the important historic aspects of the property? Was a known architect of the era involved in the design of the property? Did the property ever play a documented role in the history of the town? I think the historic commission might have answers to some of those questions. Um, Do you all want me to email out? This is still very, very rough. Do you want me to email out this very rough version so you can see what's in it so far um, when I get home and have it on the actual computer? Oh, I know how I mean, yeah. Like, I don't need to review it. Yeah. Kind of having a hard time hearing you, Julie. Oh, sorry. I have a, a very, very rough draft of the CPA application, which I can email out as soon as I get back home to everybody if you want to see where we are in the very, very rough draft and see if you have any thoughts that can be added to the um, request. So I will do that. I am. Um, I apologize for not having it on this computer. Um, 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 so the, I think that's it for our agenda. Um, public comment, I, I think I scared our one public person off. Um, she's gone. So I guess we won't have public comment. Um, next meeting time and date. Two weeks. Uh, let's see. Does anybody have? When are CPA applications due? March first. Okay, so we have a little bit to play with. We have a little bit of time. And if who's going to work on letters? Are you working on letters, or is anybody else going to be designated to work on letters? Um. So I can just. I want to reach out to the historic commission anyway because mm -hmm. I have some questions to support this. Mm -hmm. Um. And I have an English language committee, so I can ask them. <laughs> Senior center or VFW? Does anybody know anybody in um, VFW? Right. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah, I have a contact with the previous commander, and then you know, um, I've I've got contacts with at least two or three of the members. So. Yeah. So what I, I I I might I might have missed what you were what you were looking for, but yes, I I have availability to the the members. Okay, I think what we're we want to do is reach out to them and tell them about what the plan is and see if they would support write a letter. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah, that's no problem. That building. Um, and they can send that to me to include in this um, application. Or you can give them my contact information if they have questions. Okay, cool, perfect. That'd be great, thanks. Hey, didn't the beekeepers used to go in there a lot too? 
I mean, you know, is more letters going to be helpful or is it just? No, it's usually the critical three to five. All right. Okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah. So what my focus is on, again, on the same town meeting, I'd really like us to set aside money for a preliminary design for a community and senior center, because mm -hmm. I don't want to mislead people that we're moving town hall and the seniors are going to get leftovers. It has Great. to be crystal clear to everybody that this is a twofold approach that we want the seniors on a single story building, you know, in a gorgeous structure. And this is the means to do it. And I know a few of the uh, connected community initiative members actually went and toured the brand new Hadley Senior Center. I think that's two, two years old now, three years old. And they said it's absolutely stunning. Very well thought out. Yeah, and uh, Hadley provided us with all their numbers. They did a massive comparison of a bunch of different communities, the size, what people liked about it, what they didn't like about it. So when they designed Hadley, they took all that into account. You know, I, I do know one of the big things that you know, a lot of people are looking at or talking about is, um, you know, the, the geothermal on, um, I've reached out to Irving and I haven't really got an answer back yet as to why what they had failed so badly that they abandoned it and went to mini splits. So, but that definitely sounds like more of a design failure than anything else. Um, geothermal has been quite a few years and, and my understanding is that it works very well. I mean, I, I pushed for geothermal at the highway garage, but that got shot down because they said the tubing was too expensive to put in concrete. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's more expensive up front, but the, what you save over the years is massive. Well, the thing is, I mean, I wanted to put it in our vehicle storage area. You know, if, if we were truly a green community, what we should have done was we should have geothermal that spent the money on the tubing, put up, a, put up a, a, um, a solar panel to run the pump. And then I'd have 50 degree heat, which now I pay gas, natural gas to heat. I am so glad to hear you saying this, Kevin. <laughs> I wanted to, uh, I didn't know that that was something you, you tried to do. Was the plan to put it in the floors, in the cement? Yeah. yeah. Because um, one thing that might be, um, uh, if that was what killed it, I can sort of understand why people would be very, a little more apprehensive about putting it in the cement. But if it was on the walls, like in a forced hot, not a forced hot, in a, in a radiator system. Right. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a lot less expensive? Yeah. Well, yeah, yes and no, but it wouldn't be as efficient. It's a simple fact that I mean, if you look at that, you know, you, you look at a radiator system, you know, you're, you're putting out over 100 degrees to try and bring up the temperature of, of your area. When you actually physically put it in the concrete, your concrete absorbs the heat and holds the heat. And it doesn't take as much to keep it there. Yeah. Um, a buddy of mine down the street, he's got it in his floor. We put it in his garage and you can be there in the middle of the winter and lay there in a, in a t-shirt and a pair of shorts and lay on the floor and work on something. It's, it's unbelievable. So I, I've always, I've always sworn by it, but, um, but again, I don't know what happened in Irving, whatever it was, was very catastrophic and, and, and where they abandoned the entire system. And I know that there's a few people in town that are aware of that and very leery of geo. Right. What else is on let's, the agenda? That's it. Let's pick a new date for our next meeting. How about uh, the week of the 17th of January? Any day that week is I'm open. Does anybody have a preference? What day is today? Today's a Thursday. Thursday. <clears throat> you want to meet Thursday the 20th at, say, 7 p.m.? Do we need to meet in two weeks or do you want to push it out three? Three is fine. Just, just a thought. Yeah. Yep. Do you want to go for that the 27th? 27th is okay, probably. I mean, unless we have more business to do. Um, we wanted to start. We wanted to start. We want to provide support to Kevin for. Um, 
the budgetary and capital the process. The budgetary and capital process. And we probably, probably sooner than the summer start. All right, so yeah, that works. Yeah, we can do the week before. And then Greg, you had something you wanted to add to the agenda. Um, the thermal thing? Yes. The, you talk on the 20th still, sorry? On the 20th, yeah. Yep. So seven o'clock on the 20th? Seven o'clock on the 20th, the agenda items will be the CPA application, the geothermal thing, and support for Kevin's budget. Um, discussion of that. Um, before we close the meeting, there was one thing I wanted to ask John about, just in terms of the, um, the work that's being planned at the church and the, um, the prioritization of the different things. Um, because I, I, can I screen share something real quick, just a photograph of the church? I'm not very good at this, but I think I can probably get it to happen. All right. Did it work? Yes. Okay. So if you look at the steeple, um, the biggest problem with the steeple is not that it's tipping, but that it's not been painted in 40 or 50 years, probably. I think that if there isn't any damage, we're lucky, but that if there is, it should be fixed right away. And if, if there isn't, it should be painted right away so that it doesn't become a problem. Um, it's really bad. I mean, you can see that this is the picture from the architects rendering years ago. So it's much worse than this now. It's for three or four years probably, right? I don't know, three years, two years. Trust me, I saw it up front. I was hugging it, so. <laughs> so did you, did you, when you were there, did you see any signs of rot? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, there is, there is some rot. I mean, you know, you've got some carpentry work that's gonna need to be done up there. Um, you know, again, there was, there was some areas that we didn't see just because we were so close to the power line that we really couldn't go much further than what we were. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, 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 that tower needs work. There's no doubt about it. You know, and I'm not sure who's going to go up there and do it. I know it ain't going to be me. Not I can tell. It's going to be me. Who so, did it once? Yeah, usually I only do one stupid thing at a time. So, Kevin, when um, when when it is addressed, whenever that is, um, is that the kind of a situation where they literally have to build a whole, you know, little platform with a, a rail around the outside, or is it? Well, it depends on depends on what they're going to do. You know, they they could very well. Uh, again, you know, back to your original training that you should remember um, was is any person that's on an anchorage point is going to be 5,000 PSI. So with that being said, if you anchor onto something, you have to make sure that it's it's 5,000 5, for fall protection. So then do you do it that way? Do you go up there with a lift? Do you go up there? Do you build staging around it like they did the Statue of Liberty? I mean, there's all different ways you can approach that. Do we have that kind of access to the, I mean, the fire department is not going to let us borrow their fire truck. Oh, no, no, no. This is, this is, you're hiring somebody. You're, you're, you're talking $15,000 worth of work to, to fix the carpentry and paint what you're looking at minimum. That's, that's a rough guess right off the top of my head. So I guess my question for John then is, is that already kind of at the top of the list or one of the things at the top of the list? No, one of the things at the top of the list is the structural integrity of it. I don't care mm -hmm. about the looks of it. I don't care if three boards are rotting. I care about if it's literally listing and we need to get some structural engineers in there and sign off on it, that's the priority. So, okay. um, you know, does it need to be done? Yes. Aesthetically, does it need to be done? Yes. It, it, yes, 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 yes. But the priority right now is, is it stable? If we can have one or two engineers say, no, that's perfectly fine. It's stable then we can make a decision whether we're going to invest money in it. Did, um, did, have you been in talking with Peter Thomas at all about the steeple? I haven't. My hands have been in 18 other projects. Yeah, no, I, it sounds like you've been very busy. Um, the only I'm, reason I'm I all over the place. You're, you're only aware of two or three. Yeah. yeah. The only reason I'm mentioning um, this um, Peter Thomas is because he... Um, handed me a book about church steeples in New England and it has all these different um, styles of church steeples and there is one in that book that very much resembles this so I there's no way I can say definitively because I'm not a structural engineer but it is very very similar 
in the way that the tilt is built into the design of the steeple. So I don't think that that steeple is tilting. I, th I mean, it is, I, it, I think that it was designed the way that it is. Huh. I don't think that it was something that happened over time, but I'll be glad to forward that to you guys. And um, the other thing I wanted to ask about just in terms of urgencies around the church is in the front of the building, as Kevin knows, um, Peter and I slapped together a little patch to keep the water from getting into um, the area to the right of the front steps, which are, um, I don't know if they're, are they stone, Kevin, or poured cement? Do you remember? I, I want to say, I want to say there's cement, but I could be wrong. Well, in any case, there, um, there is the pillar to the right of the four pillars holding up the narthex on the steps is, um, is about an inch above the level of those steps. So the architects suggested that it might be because the steeple was pulling the pillar up, but it's definitely not that. It's that the, the stone or cement steps are sinking into the ground on the right-hand side because there's no um, seal to the, to the soil around the base. Whereas on the left-hand side, there is a cement patch somebody put in and it's all zipped up. But as long as that area is dirt on the right-hand side, this problem is gonna get worse. So that's something that I would say we, we really need to put at the very top of the list because it's gonna mean down the road that not only the pillar on the right, but the steps themselves are, you know, gonna be way more likely to just crack. And, you know, the pillar is gonna be in worse condition than it is now. I think right now it could probably just be shimmed and the area to the right cemented over and, you know, sealed. And is that something you could have Paul Corpita look at at the same time? Yep. Yep, that way it just gives us a price. Thanks. Dynamite. Thanks, Greg. Yep, thank you. Good, well, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second it. Hey, can I second that? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Favor? Aye. Aye. Hey. All right. That's you Thanks, know. everybody. All good, right. Good Have to see you. Have a lovely night. Good to see you guys. Till next time. Yeah. Thank you.